Yeah, sit down. Sit down. Sit, sit. Thank, thank that was nice. I love getting unearned standing ovations. Chris, thank you very much. He was talking about how old he was. I wasn't going to talk about that, but he'd been doing this for 54 years. I was thinking about that on the way over here. That's about the 70s or something like that, right? I went to my mama's house the other day. My mom is 88. My daddy is 91. And my daughter came with me. And, and my mama has one of those old rotary phones in the back. And my little girl said, Daddy, what is that? I said, honey, that's a spaceship. <laughs> Chris, when you started, y'all were laying cable so that those things could work. Y'all remember standing in the hallway trying to get your brother or sister off the phone so you could talk to your boyfriend or your girlfriend? <laughs> Come on, don't tell on yourself. You know what I'm talking about. Look, I can't, I can't believe that y'all put me up here after Marty Walsh. Seriously, the only two cabinet secretaries that can't speak me and Marty Walsh. Nobody can understand what we say. I'm from New Orleans. He's from Boston. Neither of us know what an R is or an R. <laughs> and so if y'all don't understand what I'm saying, it's not my fault, all right? I went to St. Matthias. It's a problem. I have eight brothers and sisters. They beat me up my whole life, so I'm going to try to do the best I can. Hey, Chris. Hey, understand me. I can, well, no, I understand you. <laughs> Every time he calls me, I understand me. He says, hurry the hell up. <laughs> That's all he said. He said, Mitch, this is Chris. Hurry the hell up. I'm here. Yes, sir. I got it. The president told me to listen to you if you call. He calls me off the time. He, he's like a dog. He's trying to talk a dog off a meat truck. He's riding me like a wet mule. He goes, look, my people need to work. Anyway, it's great to see all of y'all. I'm sorry. He's telling He's telling you the truth. He's not blowing smoke. He's really powerful. Good looking, powerful, strong, smart. You know the whole thing. He's the boss. But, but, it, but it is true that, that in your life, in, in all of y'all's young lives, I'm looking at all y'all. I'm 61. I'm not going to ask any of y'all how old y'all. My mom would slap me if I did that. Um, you, haven't, you haven't had a president that, that has been this aggressive and this unabashedly pro-labor. Uh, president Biden says this all the time. He brags about it all the time. He tells me, you know that nobody's mentioned the word labor more than I have. And if you add up all the times, all of the presidents in the history of the whole country, I still got them beat. I say labor more times than I ride Amtrak, and I got that award too. <laughs> he, he, says, he says it all the time like we forget, you know. So yesterday, he was at the AFL-CIO, gave a big old speech, long speech, tough speech, smart speech, laying out his vision and agenda for America was pretty simple is that working folks are the ones who built America, and America ought to support working folks, and labor is working folks, and labor built middle America, and middle America built the country, so labor built the country. And if you can figure that out, you can figure the rest of it out. And so when he came into office, he said he was going to use his power to make sure that he helped regular folks, folks like him, folks like me, grew up on Prius Street and General Pershing. He grew up, you know, in Delaware. He can talk about gas prices. He knows that when they went up, and his daddy sat at that table and me making a choice between bread and eggs. He understands that. He knows that. He grew up in the neighborhoods where we grew up. And so he's used his power to do the things that are necessary to help the American people. We've gone through tough times. There's no question about it. But this is a guy that goes to work every day with his shoulder to the wheel to help and to build the economy from the bottom up and the middle out. And the way he did that as it relates to what I'm supposed to be doing is he pulled some people together. Y'all remember they said the nation was so divided nobody could figure out how to do anything together? Well, Joe Biden came in and said, hey, I'm going to put some votes together, and I'm going to put $1.2 trillion on the table. Now, let me explain how special this is to you. Reagan tried it, and everybody since him. Anybody in here old enough to, to remember Dwight Eisenhower? No. But that's the last time, that's the last time we did something this big. And every president has tried it. And whether it was the previous presidents, they all said we can have infrastructure week, they can never get it done. This president got it done to the tune of $1.2 trillion. That's a lot of change. That's, I don't know, I don't know where y'all are from or what corner y'all live on, but in my neighborhood, that's a, lot of, that's a lot of change. That's good money and it's real money. And it's money that everybody wants, even the people that voted against it. As, as Speaker Pelosi said to me, Mitch, don't get confused. They vote no, but they want the dough. <laughs> Every one of them. You got Republican legislators and governors across this country who were against it, that had gone out having press conferences saying how wonderful are that they're now using it to build things. And you know what? That's okay. 
because this president said that's fine. This is a bipartisan deal. Everybody in America should get the benefit of it. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to rebuild the roads. We're going to rebuild the bridges. We're going to invest in the airports. We're going to invest in the ports. We're going to invest in the waterways so we can get ships moving supplies to the shelves. We're going to build a new clean energy economy. And here, just for you, just for you, everybody in this room, he basically said, I'm Joe from Scranton, and I know that knowledge is the key to the future. And access to knowledge is the great equalizer, and he was going to level the playing field by making sure that every American had access to high-speed internet, otherwise known as broadband. Right? So I want to just talk to you just for a second about how a, a couple months ago we used to call everything broadband. And we know that's what it is, and that's what we want to do, except a young man that worked for me went home one weekend told his daddy that he worked for this crazy guy from New Orleans. And when he said, what do you do? He said, well, that guy's trying to help lay broadband. And the daddy said, I don't know what that is. And he said, well, it's high-speed internet. He said, well, why don't the hell you just say that? <laughs> so that's why we referred to it as high-speed internet, to talk real simple so that people like me can understand what it is because it makes sense. Talk plain talk to regular people and find places where they live. And so in this bill, besides all the stuff that I talked to you about before, that are going to basically employ people that are in labor unions across all of those sectors and across all of those unions, especially in the Department of Transportation. On the high-speed internet piece, there is $65 billion in what's called the BEAD program or the Middle Mile program or the Affordable Connectivity program, essentially to make sure that every American has access to the knowledge they need to live where they want, to work how they want, and to make their life and their families work easier. And if you didn't understand that before COVID, you got a big dose of it now. And nobody can get this done unless the folks in this room actually do the work. And so this bill is a delivery on the promise that the president made to each and every one of you from number one, helping return him to office and sanity to the White House, if you haven't been watching the hearings, And, and to ask and to tell you thank you for helping pass the bill and design the bill and to continue to be involved, Chris, in the implementation of the bill. I was joking with him earlier, but this is not an easy thing. It requires hard work. It requires stick to itiveness in every way along this pathway of designing the implementation of the bill. He has been there and you have been there. Now, y'all know a whole bunch of stuff. Lots of times I was a legislator when I passed the bill and the governor signed the bill, I was like, ooh, thank God, it's over. That's just the beginning. Somebody's got to do the work. Somebody's got to show up on the site. Somebody's got to dig the hole. Somebody's got to move the mud. Somebody's got to lay the fiber. Somebody's got to actually make sure everybody can talk to each other, and you know what that's like. That is why the president says that America has been built on your backs. And that's why the president said that when I build back America, I'm not going to build it back the way it was. I'm going to build it back better. And build it back better means seeing everybody. And so when he uses the word equity, he wants to make sure that we understand that people have been left out of this economy are seen, and everybody's got a chance to play, urban, rural, black, white, brown, across the whole spectrum. That's number one. Number two, building a better America means using products that are made in America. We're getting a healthy dose of what it's like to rely on other folks to fix our stuff. We can build it our stuff right here in this great country. The third thing is climate. Climate's busting our hump. If you haven't seen the wildfires in New Mexico, the storms in Louisiana, the tornadoes in the Midcoast, we got to build back stronger and better. So when y'all are out there doing your work, you got to use strong materials. You got to build right. You got to know that something's coming around the corner that you haven't seen before. And no matter how big and how bad it is, we got to make it strong enough so that we're good to go, no matter what's coming. All right. And the fourth thing the president said is we're not building anything back without labor. And strewn throughout all of these agreements is the idea that you, that you built America and the president wants to make sure that you're invested and you continue to do so. That's essentially what it is. It's not that complicated. The other side says only a few of us should do stuff and only a few of us would benefit. Our side says everybody gets to do stuff and everybody benefits. That's really the difference between what we're seeing out there right now. Building an economy, as the president said, from the bottom up and the middle out so that all Americans have a participate to, uh, an opportunity to participate 
in what the president calls a better America. And as you have heard him say many, 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 many times, and he, his life has been exemplary of this, there is nothing people in America cannot do if we can find common ground, put our shoulder to the wheel, and find a way to get America back on track so we can win the 21st century. And he thinks you're the ones who are gonna be able to do it, which is why he passed this bill and why he needs your help. God bless you. Thank you very much.